My goal for this clip is to get JSPM initialized and have the pieces in place so that I can start to use syntax like import say hello from greeter. So the first thing I'll need to do is move into the root of this project. And this specific project is under a source folder. It's called movies. This is where you can see my project.json file and the www root folder. And I will type JSPM in it. We should be able to do that because if we npm install JSPM with a dash G switch, I'll be able to execute JSPM from anywhere on the machine. And what JSPM will do to initialize this project is ask me a series of questions. For the most part, I can take the default answers, but there's a couple questions where I want to make sure you choose the correct answer. So the first question is, should JSPM create package.json? I want to say yes. I'll show you what is inside of this file in just a little bit, but it is the file that both JSPM and NPM will use to track the packages and libraries and frameworks that you have installed for this project. So ultimately when I JSPM install Aurelia, the fact that I'm using Aurelia will be recorded in package.json. And then other developers who grab the source code to this project, they can just run JSPM install without any other parameters and JSPM will install all of the libraries and utilities and frameworks and packages that are listed in package.json. So I'll just press enter for that first question, press enter for the second question, allow JSPM to do both of those things. This third question is very important. The wording is a little bit strange, but it is essentially asking me, from the project's perspective, where is your public folder path? That is, where do you serve static assets from? And I am serving static assets from www root. So that is my answer to that question. I will take the default answer here. I'll allow JSPM when I install something to install it into a folder under that public folder path. It's a folder called JSPM packages. So when I install Aurelia, ultimately all the source code will go there. I'll also allow JSPM to add a config.js file there. We'll see what that does in just a second. I'll tell JSPM to yes, please create that. This question is asking me, what is the URL that a client would use to get to that public folder? And it's just the root of the website, so the slash answer is fine. And then I need to pick which transpiler I want to use. So there's a couple projects out there, both Tracer and Babel, that have the ability to take ECMAScript 6 and ECMAScript 7 code and transpile it or transform it into ECMAScript 5 code, which will work in all sorts of browsers, even IE9. And the compiler I want to make sure that I use is Babel, which is the default selection for me. So I will just press enter there. And now JSPM will go off and download some things that are needed for this project. And now let's switch over and see if we can get this new syntax to work. I'll explain what's happening behind the scenes. But before I do that, I just want to go into index.html. And the important thing to understand about JSPM is it is not only a package manager, but it also installs the scripts that will function as a runtime environment for my application. These are scripts that can dynamically transpile JavaScript on the fly and also go out and dynamically load modules. And one of the things I'll be able to do with JSPM is I no longer have to order my scripts and include all my scripts on the page at once. I'm going to get rid of that code. Instead, I'm just going to load two files, one which JSPM has installed for me, and it's under JSPM packages and it is called system.js. And the second thing that I'll need to place on the page is this config.js. This is a file that is created by JSPM and it essentially contains the configuration information needed for my particular project so that system.js can load up my application and the libraries that it requires. I promise we'll take a look at what is in config.js in just a moment, but for the most part, it is opaque to you when you are developing an application. JSPM manages this file, and except for setting perhaps a couple optional transpiler settings, you never really need to go in and edit this file. But it is the configuration for system.js, and system.js is a universal dynamic module loader. It understands how to load ECMAScript 2015 modules. It also knows how to work with AMD modules, which you might have used in the past if you've used RequireJS. And it even knows how to load CommonJS modules. And one way I can tell system.js to load a module is to use an API that it provides off the system global called system.import and I tell it that I want to import a module called app. That will send system.js off looking for something called app.js that's in the same folder. I don't have to use 
the file extension here. I don't have to say app.js. I can just say app. And if I were to take my app.js and place it in a different folder, maybe like a main folder, I can use a relative path in front of my module name. So this would be saying, go to the main folder from here and then look for app.js. But my app.js, it's right in the same folder as my HTML file. So now system.js will go out and grab app.js and app.js says, I need to import something from another module, a module called greeter. So again, not greeter.js, just greeter. You'll start to think of your JavaScript files, not as script files that you have to include on the page, but as modules. And these modules can be referenced from other scripts using import statements. In order for this to work, greeter.js has to export a function or an object or multiple abstractions and give other modules the ability to import these exports. Everything else, by the way, will stay private. This is one of the beautiful features of ECMAScript 6, the fact that things will be private by default and only those things that I export will be public. This means I don't need to use an iffy to control the scope of different things. It also means I don't have to create some sort of global object that I can hang things off of unless I want to. But let's save everything and come back to the browser and refresh. And my application still works. It still pops up that message box, hello, and now, Let's try this message again. And I can see that now message is not defined. And that's because again, greeter.js, it is loaded as a module. And unless I export something, it's not going to be available for the outside world to see. It's a private implementation detail. And what we're going to find in this new world of ECMAScript 2015 slash ECMAScript 6, and when using frameworks like Aurelia, is that the designers of these next generation frameworks, they're going to design modules, and these modules are going to export specific abstractions and classes and functions and variables that you might need to import into your application to be able to use them. And this is dramatically different than how we have used JavaScript for the last 15 years. So now that we can see this code working, I'll explain just a little bit about what JSPM and system.js are doing behind the scenes. And then we'll be ready to jump in and pull in Aurelia and create our hello world with Aurelia.